Antennas from the past. Another episode. This is not so much antennas from the past as it is antennas the way we use them today compared with the way we used to use them in the past. I was looking through some old radcoms recently. It reminded me back in my early days when I was licensed back in 1960. The way we use this particular antenna then is not the way we generally use it now. I wonder which is the best way. Let me explain. Let's discuss. And you tell me your opinion, your version, and the way that you think we should use this antenna. Just a reminder to let you know that the Yesu cashback is still running. It doesn't end until the end of this month. For example, on this Yesu FT710, you can save £85 with a Yesu cashback. You can also do part exchange. So if you're looking for a great budget class HF transceiver, look no further. The Yesu FT710 is unbeatable. Check our website, give us a call. Let's do a deal. When I was first licensed back in 1960, I uh, had a very large garden, I was living with the parents, and I used uh, a long wire and an antenna machine unit. It worked very well. Didn't have much money, so uh, I had to make deal with that. And then I got married, and I had even less money then, and I had a small garden. Well, quite clearly, an infed wire wasn't really a sensible option. So I decided to look at the vertical. Now, as I said before, I've been looking back in some radcoms. And you know, the way we used to use vertical is in those days. It was totally different to the way we use verticals today. Generally speaking, there are exceptions. If you bought a vertical, as I did, when I had enough money, um, high gain, 14 AVQ it was, uh, 40 through 10 meters, didn't have walk bands then. And uh, it was a very popular antenna. Uh, the company was latterly taken over by MFJ. And of course now MFJ have stopped manufacturing, so the high gain antenna no longer exists, at least. It probably exists in many stations, but you can't actually purchase it new as far as I know now. But where do you put it? Well, the way you, we used to use vertical then was to put it up in the air. The favourite place was on a roof, or the end of a rift, ridge on a roof. And used to run the radials down on the roof, lay them on the roof, the roof tiles or slates, because they were insulators anyway. And it worked very well. We used to run them down the roof at an angle of 45 degrees if possible, because that would give us a good match with 50 ohm kites cable and uh, it worked very well now there was a warning it went from one of the manufacturers that don't try and mount this antenna on the ground unless you've got no alternative well we seem to re reverse that now if somebody says they're using a vertical the chances are that they are probably mounting it on the ground now, mounting a vertical on the ground has got several problems. The most obvious one, of course, is it doesn't see so much sky, because very often a vertical is mounted in a small garden. But, also, you're likely to pick up more noise, because noise has both horizontal and vertical components. The vertical component travels much further as a ground wave than the horizontal component. So it means to say that if you've got a vertical antenna, it's the vertical polarised noise which is going to dominate. That's really why vertical antennas are generally rather noisy. But put it up in the air, you tend to be above the noise quite a bit. You tend to see a lot more sky and you tend to get very, very good results. And I remember Pat Hawker 
technical topics G3VA did a short article on vertical antennas and he was saying how there was something rather special about a vertical antenna in the air particularly in the summer evenings when it seemed to work DX so much better than some other antennas now I can't say that I noticed that or if I did it was a long time ago 1960 was yeah it was a long time ago we won't go there will we so the advantage of putting the antenna in the air is that you get much better performance you get less noise and it seems to work very well and of course the vertical antenna is omnidirectional so I wonder why we're now putting the antennas on the ground is it because we've got no other option or is it because we're doing what everybody else does put it on the ground I must admit that I have tried a vertical on the ground over the last 10 or 15 years at three different locations here in Essex and I've been really disappointed raising it above the ground does make a significant significant difference I've only raised mine around about two meters above the ground but there's a significant difference I'm sure if I could raise it up to around about I don't know what four or five meters above the ground I get even better results so it begs the question are we using the vertical to its best ability are we using it erecting it in, a, in the right way or are we losing something? Are we missing something? And why did most people use verticals in the air back in my day? And why now do people tend to put them on the ground? Is it because it's an easy option? Is it because everybody else does? I don't know. Anyway, it's an interesting point to discuss. I'll leave it with you. Where should we put our vertical antennas? Now, don't be rude about this. Where should we put our vertical antennas? On the ground, in the air. Of course, that assumes that you've got the option. And I don't want to dissuade people from putting verticals on the ground if they've got no alternative, because it's better than nothing. But, why have we changed the way we use vertical antennas compared with the way we used them 50 or 60 years ago? Let me know. Let me have your opinion and let's see what uh, your views are.